Good morning. Craig Howard here. Happy to be with you again this morning. You know, a lot of people <clears throat> struggle with the idea of the resurrection. Like what? I mean, it's not a common occurrence. It's not something that we see happen a lot. It's not something that we're familiar with. We don't see people coming back to life from the dead. And so a lot of people struggle with the idea of Jesus' resurrection. I read about a man by the name of Malcolm uh, Muggridge. He's, uh, he's a teacher. He's a philosopher. And uh, he, he struggled with the idea of Jesus' resurrection. And he struggled with the idea of life after death and, and what it meant. Um, and he wrote this, he wrote this statement. He said, for myself, as I approach my end, I find Jesus' outrageous claim ever more captivating and meaningful. Quite often I wake up in the night, as the old do, I feel myself to be half out of my body, hovering between life and death, with eternity rising in the distance. I see my ancient carcass, prone between the sheets, stained and worn like a scrap of paper, drowned in the gutter and, and hovering over it, myself like a butterfly released from its chrysalis stage and ready to fly away. Are caterpillars told of their impending resurrection? How in dying they will be transformed from poor earth-crawling creatures into creatures of the air with exquisitely painted wings? If told, do they believe it? I imagine the wise old caterpillars shaking their heads. No, it can't be. It's a fantasy. Yet, in the limbo between living and dying, as the night clock ticks remorselessly, Remorselessly on, I hear those words, I am the resurrection and the life, and feel myself to be carried along on a great tide of joy and peace. A lot of people struggle with the idea of the resurrection. A lot of people struggle with the idea of, of living in eternity in heaven and life after death. Um, they have a hard time with it because they can't see it because nobody has shown it to them. You can't prove it scientifically. And if it can't be more and more in our day and age, if you can't prove it scientifically, then it can't be true. But Christianity was never based on science. Christianity was always based on faith. Jesus made it very clear when he walked this earth that we have to walk by faith, not by sight. That we have to have faith in him. When Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and he got almost to Jesus and began to sink, Jesus reached down and helped him back up. <clears throat> and then he said, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? You made it this far. Why did you doubt? Why did you start doubting? Faith is something all of us struggle with. But I want to remind you of words that happened, of, of an event that happened so long ago as we near Easter Sunday. It's found in John chapter 20, verses 1 to 9. It says, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started to the tomb. Both were running, but the others outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He's talking about John himself. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciples who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw Jesus and believed. They did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Even though Jesus had tried to teach them, this is what was going to take place. Even though Jesus had tried to warn them and prepare them about what was to come, still when it happened, because this was so foreign to everything that their life experience had taught them, they struggled with the idea that Jesus had actually risen from the dead. 
I want to ask you to step out in faith. I want to ask you to let your faith give you spiritual wings. I want to ask you to step beyond what this world says is scientific fact and believe that God is bigger, that this world didn't just happen into existence, that your life isn't just some organic accident that took place after some big bang millions of years ago, but that there is a God that is working through his plan and part of that plan was to send Jesus to be, to be payment for your sins and mine. He went to the grave, but in his perfection, in his righteousness, he couldn't be kept there. He came out and became the payment for your sins and mine. Think about that this week as we celebrate Easter. It's really not about Peter Cottontail. It really isn't. It really isn't about Easter eggs and and all that. It's about a Savior being risen from the dead and preparing a home for each of us. Hope you have a good day. I'm getting ready to leave to go to physical therapy in just a few minutes. I'm seeing some more improvement and uh, looking forward to be back in my church this Sunday. So God bless you. You have a wonderful day and I will see you, Lord willing, tomorrow. Bye.